Okay, welcome back to Making the Square Western Saddle Tree Pattern. It is a working saddle, and we are on the third episode. And with this episode, we get to actually start assembling the saddle. And we'll start with some of the, the easiest piece. There we go. So this should be relatively easy. We'll need those, so we'll need something to kind of clamp that little piece in place. So I'm gonna get a clip. And very, we're just going to flip this over wrong side. Take off my glue tip. And then we'll flip it over again so that we can piece it right center middle back. Does that make sense? Center, middle, back. And this is a totally optional piece. You could tool in something if you want instead of actually using this piece. Um, but it is a finishing piece, usually because on a working saddle, this would be two pieces stitched together. Gives it more flexibility and also it's, um, hard to find really big pieces of leather, right? So they could piece, in the real world, this piece and this piece is separate on um, the animal skin, the cow, uh, cowhide, and then they can just stitch them together. Um, makes a better use when they're making the big ones, but anyways, this here would definitely be to cover stitching, okay? And we'll go ahead and put that aside. Okay, so let's move on to rigging. We'll talk first about hardware. You could purchase D-rings. This is a decorative one. It's a little bit small, but it's decorative, it's etched. These are great for your pleasure saddles, um, but they're a little pricey and um, they're not really very rugged and I want a rugged saddle, so I'm not gonna do a flat D-ring. Instead, this is a 10, millimeter jump ring that I just got at a craft store and take a pair of pliers right where the opening is on the ring if you see and I've already pre-closed it okay so pre-close it so you get a perfect circle I never come pre-closed and then right where that is we're going to put it on to it's uh, like centered at back about the um, the length that you um, that you want your rigging strap to be so um, just out of uh, experience, this is this is where I want to put it, and then I'm just gonna flatten that side, and um, and now I have a very inexpensive D-ring that I can find anywhere. All right, so make four of those, and then fairly simple on the front rigging, I'm just gonna slip it on fold over so my edges match. Okay, so. Glue. And just for expediency, usually I just wait for it to dry on a finger press, but these are getting long, these videos, so I'm trying to find ways to slow it down or speed it up. <laughs> and um, I'll do that really quickly to the other side. This is actually my third day, so third video, third day. I do what I can, I bag it up, come back the next day. Okay, now on a rigging strap, I never did really find a good way to, to do this without adding too much bulk. So it's actually gonna go under here. That would be incorrect. It should go actually around and then drop down from right here, right about the edge of the tree, so or the seat on the tree. That makes sense. So um, when I put this piece on back here, come on, baby, don't make a liar out of me. So when I put this piece on in the back, I want, I don't want to see the ring. All I really want to see is, um, the, I mean, I don't want to see the strap. I really just want to see the ring. So it's not going to be much of a fold over at all. Okay. So we're only going to do just a 
maybe a quarter like that. Is that about a quarter of an inch? It's about a quarter, maybe an eighth. So for a pleasure saddle, you wouldn't really even have this. They don't, they don't do double D ring. Yes, they are double D ring saddles. And um, just want to do something that doesn't add a ton of bulk. It's too many layers. All right. Okay. So that's your front and your back. And then we're going to go ahead and this one is easy to place. And um, we're going to put, put it under our seat, I mean under the tree. And it kind of matches what my tree, the tree bottom. Okay, so going to match the edge in there, um, come up and around here with these. All right, so it should just hang like that. And... You can either put the leather onto, I mean the glue onto this piece or the other piece. And I want a little bit of more control, so I'm going to put it on my tree. I'm about to fall over. And then symmetry is important. something to chase and bark at. Right. There you go. And then this piece I'll probably go like this fine center with the finger press. And then I know I want it right along this line where the seat is. Right where the seat is. So Go ahead and and this time I'm going to go right side because I really want the right side up just in case, but you could do it the other way. Sometimes I find wrong side into wrong side um, sticks better, but this leather is not going to matter. All right. There's our double D rig. Right? Doubles. Okay, the last bit to an authentic um, double D is one last piece of, of leather that goes from here to here, and I'm just using a leather lace. Um, 332nd. You could use 8th inch if that's what you've got. And so I'm just gonna... I don't have any of it, you know, tell you what the, the actual length is. You just make it to fit. Um, bring it on around. All right, and then we'll do the same to the other side as well. Okay, so we're going to continue now with the rigging and, um, you can see I got all my rigging pieces, front, rear, and then I've got some hardware out. You'll need um, a buckle, whatever size leather lace you're going to use for the connector strap. You'll need three either jump or, or D rings uh, that'll fit your leather lace. I'm using five millimeter jumps and a, a eighth inch, um, not eighth, sixteenth inch uh, buckle. Um, then we have to make these, all right? And so this is a nine millimeter jump ring and a straight pin. Now you can use any wire that you want that's thin enough and strong enough. Um, you know, sometimes you'll find a really strong wire and it's the wrong color and then when you bend it over it's just huge. Okay, and this is a really strong wire, right? So finding the perfect wire can be hard, but straight pins are in the US are actually pretty easy to find. So that's why I use straight pins. I just buy in bulk and then um, I use them for a lot of things. Um, the first step, it's going to be, we're going to um, use a pair of cutters, uh, side cutters, and we're just going to snip off the pinhead. And you can save those for decorations if you want. 
um, so you don't have to throw them away. I just throw them away. And then I'm going to take this uh, round pliers. So see how it's round? They're beading pliers. So I'm going to put it right about in the middle at the end because what I want to do is create a loop that uh, ha is flat on one side. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up this loop just a little bit so I can put in my jump ring. Oh, straight pins, just make sure they're long enough. Um, I think these are two and a half inch, or I'm sorry, one and a half inch. Um, they seem to be pretty multi purpose. Okay, and then I just closed up that loop, right? So now I need to make sure I have it the right length. And I need it to extend past this ring uh, by about that much. And I think that's, we'll call it a sixteenth of an inch. Um, but in order to clip it so it doesn't go flying, I'm just going to point it downward onto a piece of cloth um, so the cloth will catch it. So it's, bam, see, cloth caught it. It's not flying all over the place. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to, uh, just because I've, I've, <laughs> hurt myself too many times on this. Um, I'm going to get rid of the sharp point that um, that cut left behind by just filing it down. Okay, so it's less likely to cut me. I mean, it's still pretty sharp, but um, this they always created a really sharp point, and I'm, I just get tired of getting poked when I'm tacking up my model, so I just go ahead and file those down. All right, so now we'll do... Yeah, we'll do the front one. Um... These are pretty simple. I'll try to not bore you to death with it. So we, we pre-made the um, slits, right? So, and it, the important thing is that your tongue is on the front of your uh, jump ring, okay, when we put it in. And um, we, we tuck the tongue into the, the slit, and then we pull the um, lace or the leather backwards. And then um, if I made the slit large enough, it will fit that entire loop, see? So the, the loop fits in there nice and flat, and it also keep it in place. So we'll go ahead and glue that. I don't know if you want me to show you that uh, another time. I think I will go ahead and edit that out, but anyways, that's, that's your front one. Okay, and there's the front with both of those on both sides. Now what we need to do is um, we need two of these and we need just a small piece of um, of lace. So I'm going to use, I actually made this lace this morning because I can't find where I put my little baggies of brown lace. But um, anyways, I've already pre-skived it. And this is kind of like a scrap. And, and I it's so tiny what I need. I'm not going to worry too much. So um, let's go ahead and fold that over. As you can see, just a scrap piece. Kind of get small towards the end. And I already skived this morning. I did a lot of prep work this morning. Try to make this go as fast as possible. Alrighty. Now we want it to be so that it um, the loops hang over the edge. Alright. So that's going to be about right, right there. So fold that over. Not too far over the edge. I might want to close up those jump rings a little bit. All right. So I want to make sure it lays flat. And then we're going to find exact center here. I'm folding it in half. We'll finger press. Don't really need to finger press, but we're going to put glue on that center. And then we're going to put that on there, even skived. See how thick that is, even skived? Imagine how thick that would be if I hadn't. Okay. And then the last step is that we're going to glue our um, suede backing. This is mostly, no, that's not the last step, sorry. Um, next step, we need to make our um, holders. And, um, and the front ones are going to hold these, right? So we... Um, this is a way to try and help you not uh, make them too tight. So 
basically I, I looped in what I, I need to hold, right? So I know I what thickness or, or what how big that loop needs to be. Now I'm going to fold it over and um, I'll go ahead and um, glue those into place on the back. And then I'll go ahead and do the same to the other side. Okay, so those are still kind of drying, but you can see why you want to skive. I've got one, two, three, four. I got four layers of leather right in this area here, not including this. So the thinner you can get it, the better. So now we're going to go ahead and glue on our leather backing. I'm sorry, suede backing to the leather. And this is pretty. I don't know. Is this a riveting TV? I don't think so. Tight. I don't want to bore you guys, but on the other hand, I think watching people make it might be boring, but I think hopefully not. Hopefully you're enjoying this. Please let me know because if this is not something you'd watch, I need to know. Otherwise, I'm wasting my weekends doing this. Hopefully not. I do like the comments. I like the suggestions. I had uh, somebody ask for a racing saddle, and I had one pattern for it. I was able to do that. Somebody did ask for this, by the way. I don't, I don't have the name of the person, but it was a request. Hey, do a western saddle. All right. So there's that. I'm just going to set that whole thing aside right now, and I'm going to to do our. Um, rear one okay so this is pretty much going to be straightforward same as the first one um, make sure your eye is forward bring it over and um, and if we made that right it should fit that loop perfectly there we go and then we'll glue that down so I'll go ahead and do the other one I'll be back Okay, so it's just like your front, putting your uh, little um, ring buckles on. Um, now on this, we only need one loop, but I, so I need, I still need some of this scrap lace, and um, but this time I'm just going to make a D strap. Uh, sorry, um, a ring strap. Fold it over. Should be easy to make. Anytime now my teenager's going to come and I go, Mom, I'm to practice driving. And then he'll want to get in the car. And I'll have to pretend like I'm not scared for my life as he gets behind the wheels. He just got his permit, so I have to, I have to let him drive. Without letting him know I have fear for my life. Well, I tease him about it. All right. So this here, um, when it's on the horse, the... Um, this goes towards the front of the horse and um, it, it kind of, because um, their belly um, has a curve in it, right? So I don't know how to describe that, but um, so this would go is center front. That's your front. So it's a, it's a better snug fit on a curved animal rather than a straight. So we'll just find center. And put that on there. Okay, now I'm deciding how much time I want to take. This is my only opportunity to show you some things. So, um, so uh, we'll do our um, keeper over here on this side, just a standard keeper, and that's pretty simple. We've already seen how to do that. But I want to show you something that um, it's in my tooling the roper book, which this this cinch is in there too. Totally different saddle pattern, not as good as this one, but it's got a lot of things it can show you. Like all of this stuff here is pretty standard in both my books, but uh, this one and my um, parade and pleasure saddle. But anyways. Um, so when um, a roper is roping, okay, they don't want anything that will catch the lasso, and, and this would catch the lasso. See that? So right-handed ropers, so they're roping with their right hand. I put that on the wrong side. Okay. So, um, stupid me. Okay. 
So right-handed ropers would want the, uh, to have something hold that down so that it doesn't catch in the lasso. Okay, and it's called a roper sleeve. And it is a legitimate um, addition to this roper rear cinch, all right? So, I do that right? I don't know if I did that right. So, I'm on a horse and a right-handed. My last is going to be on this side. So, you can do this with this, but I have a tendency to get that glued. So, I'm going to not use that. I'm going to just, cre I created a, um, created a tool. Um, that old stand in place of my um, lace. And I'm going to get a piece of Skyver that will go all the way around. I'm going to go lower down. And you can make the Skyver long enough to go all the way up. I don't recall the exact. But what we're going to do is instead of just a billet, we're going to make a sleeve. I think that's what I want to do. And then, tricky as it is, I have to get this in here without gluing down my tool. So, I'll go it down this way so it's around, and then I'm going to push this and this down. And make a sleeve. All right. I'm pretty sure I got my sleeve before the glue dries. I'll pull out my tool. It's not coming out. Okay. So I glue this back down. Probably work better if I shellacked it or something so it's less catchy. Where's my needle on a stick? I don't. Yeah, it's stuck really good. Alrighty, let's glue that down again. Yeah, I did. Look at that. I used to make these all the time. I don't get it. And I pull that out. All right, so now we have a roper sleeve. And because I had to do what I did, I want to show you some fine tuning tricks. This is, I love my needle on a stick. I'm just going to take a little bit of glue, just a little bit of glue. I think that's the only place I needed to. Oh, there you go. That's a roper sleeve. That's that's what we'll if we put the billet in now, which probably stick. But if we go ahead and tag this thing and tuck it in. Notice how you don't have this little um, tab here to get around the lasso. So this holds it down, and um, that was probably never that high. That's the last buckle. Hold on. Um, so that's um, what a roper sleeve does. It's a uh, okay, nice, realistic, advanced detail for you. Um, last thing that we need to do is put our suede on. So our suede backing, and, and that's because we're trying to protect the horse, right? Um, or the model. So, so, yeah, come on. And you can always apply glue with a spreader. I am. Um, and if 
if you notice, I'm going from right behind the buckle to right behind the buckle tongue, right? Get that? And then that's where this would go. And it's a little long on this side, so I'll go ahead and trim that. I think with all the work I do, I can get, I don't know why they do that. All the work I do on these patterns, and I'm constantly going, huh, maybe I could modify that. All right, there you go. That is your rear. So the last thing we need to create is a connector strap, right? So a little bit of um, uh, 16th inch leather lace. Let's not do that side, it's misbehaving. And we will just make a buckle strap. Probably know how to make a buckle strap. Although silly me, I taught a Bearfest class once and um, learned that not everybody knows how to make a buckle strap. Okay, so it's over the center bar and then and then there we go. All right, so the strap is between these two and we want it to actually, once it's connected, we want it to face that way, but it's going to be a triple loop. So that's kind of deceptive because um, it'll actually loop around this way. That means I need to go in this direction to make sure, right? Now, here's something I'm just going to throw a little monkey wrench in. I really don't want to use this on this set. So I have a string girth that I made. I actually found one that I made in brown. So this, all of this hard work, whoosh, throw it away. Okay. And we're going to, um, and I'll probably switch to Latigo on one side, but... Um, I want to do my buckle strap onto here. So I'm going to go through, make my life easier. I'm going to put a point on this thing. All right, through here, and then through here. As far as these string girths, you can you can buy them um, if you can't make them. Obviously, you're going to pay for somebody else's labor, and um, if you've ever made one, you know that you really want to be paid for that labor. Sometimes I'll just, sometimes it's slow at work, and I do phones, so um, in between phone calls, or sometimes people like to talk. Uh, sometimes even on phone calls, I would just be weaving them, going, uh-huh, 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 because it doesn't require much brain or hand work. That was previous position, so I took a new position that a um, little less time. So, anyways. All right, so there we go. And uh, I would be there if I was going to use that. So you have it, and it's pointing backwards, right? Now, the weird thing is you, it doesn't really stay closed. So you could make a leather keeper um, to close that, or you could just go ahead and do what I'm about to do, and I'm just going to use a jump ring as my closure, another 5 millimeter. And um, either of these, I've seen either of these in the real world, so... Somebody's going to say, oh, that would rub. Well, you know, I've seen it in the real world, so. Tough patoobies. I'm going to do this because I have it, and I want to show you options. So, like I said, leather keeper, or you could do just a little ring in here. That would hold everything all together. Okay. And then that is... That's your front and rear cinch. We're still wrapping up the tree here. So we have our billets, and um, what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and um, put the narrower, narrower ones on the back. And basically, it's just a fold over. And 
then um, I will, so I have tongue, I have a tongue in these. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, use this on the far side. And so it's just a fold over to write about where the buckle is. You can make it longer, you know, um, but since I'm using the, um, I'm not, I don't have a keeper on my string uh, girth, so I'm gonna, um, actually I should make it even shorter than that, but I'll go with what I have right now to show you how this works. That's why it's a good idea to see real saddles uh, in real environments, see how, um, how they look, how they fit, and then what looks neat, what doesn't look tidy and neat. And then again, I will do uh, I'll do this here. I really should take a latigo strap, but right now I don't have anything cut thick enough, so um, you probably won't see me do the latigo unless I unless I want to go cut some more lace. So we'll go ahead and again, I don't need it. I want it just. I don't want a lot of excess sticking out. Now this should hide underneath, um, pretty much underneath the fenders. So um, we've got those on and um, we'll let them dry. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the breast collar. I've already done some prep work here, um, just so um, we can speed this up a little bit. Uh, let's start off with um, the center. This is a seven millimeter jump ring. Um, put that aside for right now because we need to do our, our loop here. And so we're going to get some 16th inch leather lace. And I'm going to make a little loop. I need to clean my needle off. Let's see. So go through the back. So I've got to open up that slit. So the awl actually works better for opening up holes without destroying the leather in the process. So open the hole, use the awl, poke it through. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. And then we'll open up the hole on the other side. And then we'll go ahead and poke that through. Come on, baby. Come on. Without turning around. It's misbehaving. First, but so there's the benefit of putting a point on it. Okay, and now we're going to side with the point, it's glued down. And then we want to make sure we have a decent size loop, but we, th that's cartoon size, so we're going to pull it down. Because it's going to go, like our jump ring is going to be here. Show you. And then we want to make sure the loop extends past that ring. And that it's big enough to put a strap in. And the strap can move, this is your tie down strap for those horses that need a tie down strap. So you want to make sure that it extends out enough and that the loop is big enough to, for the strap to move freely. So I think that's about right. Now we'll go ahead and glue down the other side. Well, I skied this stuff and still feels thick. Really sky it some more. And then we'll go ahead and trim it. Like I said, you could skype that down some more once it's glued on, depending upon how good you are at skiving. All right, so <clears throat> there's my center. Next step is we're gonna do our center and make sure we get this right. So these angle upward, 
right? So here's the center of the chest and this angle is upward. So we need the center to go into our seven millimeter jump ring, right? I'm not sure how much this microphone picks up, but my husband's in the other room playing with the dogs. It's adorable. Just after 25 years of marriage, he can still make me smile just by being who he is. It's awesome. All right, so we'll glue that in, or just hold that there. All right, so these are um, six millimeter D jump rings that I made into D's. You, you could keep them as rings, but really this is designed for D's. So we're gonna put uh, one of those on either side. And when we do the fold over, see we had a tooling area, you'll see where it tapers off. That's, that's really where you wanna do it. Okay, and we'll go ahead and do that. That into place. Same thing over here. I'm trying not to make you watch duplicates, but um, essentially the the problem is I I have to show you both sides on this um, just to keep it going. So if it was in a book, I would edit that out and say, okay, now do this. So I can't do that. All right, we'll just let that set up a little bit. And then we're going to work on the um, tug strap. So you have two tug straps, one on either side. And just from um, experience, I know those tug straps are about three inches long. And I'm using a 3 30 seconds um, in, on the very occasion when I actually do pull out a ruler. So here's my ruler. And so I'm going to make two three inch long straps and I might even go three and a half because the horse I'm doing is a little chesty. I've already picked a model that I'm going to put it on, so it's got a little bit of a chest. So I've got two three-inch pieces. And um, this is where you, you um, change size. So if, if it's a chesty model, like Roxy's uh, chesty, and the one that I'm doing, I sculpted myself. I just want to see him intact. He's not painted or anything, and he was he's a wreck, but, well, she, actually, I only make girls, so, um, she kind of, um, when I went to fire her in the oven, she fell over and shattered, so I pieced her back together, and I just feel so bad, because it was my first attempt, and I call her Rotor. She's Rotor. All right, so I'm making my two buckle straps. And this just is also a chance for my um, breast collar to set up before I start doing more. Actually, I could put the um, suede on it now, but almost done. Oh, we're getting there. Okay, so I got my tug straps done. <coughs> it's had a chance to dry. Okay, so my teenager's awake and he came in and asked him, Hey mom, when are you going to take me driving? I could have predicted that. Wow, if I had odds on that in Vegas, I would have won a bundle. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put our suede on. Let's make sure that we got them right, so the bigger, slightly bigger end. There. Right. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. There we go. All right, now the next thing is attaching our center 
this here to there, right? And we're gonna do that with a little 330, no, this is 1 16th. I am using 1 16th. It's the size buckle I decided on. If I could actually make it bigger. I'm gonna make sure that's a good connection there, so. You guys see me constantly dry fitting. It's a good habit to get into. Sorry, glue fell over. Okay, and I'm, I'm not gonna cut this yet. I will in a little bit, but what we want to do then now is put my loop through. And we're gonna turn this. And we're going to glue our leather lace right on to there. See that? Right onto that center right there. So the piece that I overlapped I'm gonna bring it down. Use my fingernails to scrape off the extra glue. My fingers are getting all glued up. Okay. Yeah, I probably could use a bigger jump ring, but that'll work. Sky did a little better. Look at this thickness. I don't know why it's doing that. There we go. There we go. Now it's behaving. Okay. Okay, so what we'll do is um this here needs to go between the, the legs of the horse to where the girth is. And um, I, I don't have my model up here right now, but I would usually test it to a model. I'm gonna give it a little bit too much, and I'm gonna say that's about, I'm gonna say that's about three inches. And three inches should be more than enough, right? We could trim it later. So now we need a strap that is going to um, hook to the front center girth. And I like for my buckle to go downward. If you if you buckle it this way, sometimes that hook comes undone because uh, it slips through. So if you can get your buckle to go downward, that, that helps to keep it tacked up during shows and whatever uh, photography you're going to do. So I've already made... This is a hook with either a D or a jump, and I made mine into a D. And I'm um, not real pleased with that, so I'm gonna adjust it a little bit. There we go. So in order to make sure that my uh, buckle is down and that my right side of the leather is up, I'm gonna work it this way, okay? So now that's, um, that's, See how that worked? I don't know if you saw how that worked, but you can experiment. And, um, and this is just a buckle strap. It's not going to be very long. Um, it's just a way of connecting this strap to your girth. And um, I give it about, if it's too long, you'll end up seeing the buckle on the chest of the horse, and you don't really want to see that. But now we're going to put one sixteenth inch buckle and two, a quarter sixteenth yeah this is sixteenth lace and um, like I said it's not very long this is just a simple connector strap I think it's about about a half an inch when I'm done and this just to make sure I have enough fold over that it's not going to come apart and I could make it even smaller. So now we're going to put, um, just for finishing, I'm going to put um, that type of point on it. And I'll go ahead and buckle it. Because I need to put a keeper strap. And we're going to make a leather keeper strap. Come on. 
So you ever go to shows and you see people walking around with like tweezers or pliers or, you know, little tools, toothless tools. It's because they've learned that sometimes these are better than fingers. Okay. And then I'm going to do a quick keeper strap. And um, just because there's so much bulk here, I'm going to make room for it. All right, so adjust that up. I mean, enough room, yeah. So I'm just gluing the back, right? And a little bit on the other. So it's just a leather loop. So that's going to go down in the center. And then that's going to wrap around. Don't make it too tight. Um, otherwise, it's really hard to tack up, even with a pair of helpful pliers. But there you go. All right, something you'll notice is that um, because I, I made this out of um, regular tooling leather, same leather I made the rest of the saddle out of, I need to edge coat. So I'll come back with a Sharpie and edge coat my laces later. Okay, so tugs. With the tugs, we just need, a, need to make a couple of keepers before we attach them to the saddle. So I'm just going to, um, not even going to buckle. I'm going to take something to, now again, you could use D-rings for this if you want, jump rings, I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm going to use some, some um, slip these are going to be leather slip uh, keepers, so they're not um, going to glue to the back here. We're just going to glue it to itself. We'll make two of these on either side. So we'll fold it over. What we want to, we need enough actually for three layers of straps, so we're not going to do these real tight. <laughs> and a way you can make sure it's not too tight is when you put the glue, don't put it, you know, see that little space there? So that gives me... Um, gives me a little bit more room and then you'll see how um, it's nice and loose it's gonna move see room for a third loop of leather and I'm gonna go ahead and make two of those on either side okay so you can take a moment to, to look at that um, and that is your um, pretty much assembled breast collar right uh, now we have to do how are we going to attach this to the saddle, and that'll be our next step. Okay, so if you didn't remember to put these slits in per the pattern, which I did, and I went back and put a piece of the paper pattern on, held it in place, I went ahead and got my little slits. I'm doing the um, the ones that are upper. Now another way to do it, um, if you have a really chesty model, is you could just put it right here at the edge. My pattern calls for there, but I've put them in different places. Um, so we're going to kind of open this up like that and we're going to take and i'm not even going to turn these into d's you could turn them into d's but these are five millimeter jump rings um something that i know is going to um you know take well to my tug strap or my breast collar so i don't need to make a very big strap here and um but I'm going to go ahead and um, keep this piece long. It'll be easier to tuck in there. So let's open it. I probably should put that to a point. In fact, I will because so far this leather has proven not cooperative without a point on it. And we're going to pull it all the way through, including that piece. So you see now it hangs right at the edge and that's about right. So you always want to, you know, if you, wherever you put your, your strap, uh, your breast collar loop, um, just make sure you have enough that the loop is not hanging over the edge. Okay, it should be actually on the leather. And then we'll go ahead and glue it down. And we'll hold that until it sets up, and then I'll do the same thing to the other side. 
Okay, so here's where you get to make a decision about your fenders for your uh, stair fenders. Remember these, we tooled them and they came out actually really kind of nice. Look at that, very simple, elegant. All right, so on my tree, um, there's a slit. And the slit is for your stirrup leather to go in. It goes down and then it goes up through the rigging. And then you can decide what length you want. Now you can either just go ahead and glue it to the back, right, right up here. Just glue it, boom, you're done. Trim off the excess. And then we have this for our stirrups, and it would be the same thing. You could just, you know, put it all together with your stirrups, glue it in the back, and then um, you'd be done. But I, I went to this uh, trouble of making it so these can be adjustable. Um, and that way, um, when you put a rider on, you might get a better fit, because it's really hard when you're assembling to determine exactly where do I need this. So what I prepared are these two, they're quarter inch buckles, quarter inch, really are quarter inch. And basically they fit this. So at the very end here, and by the way, I skived, I didn't do that when I skived everything else, but I skived like the last inch here and about the last inch down here. Um, just to thin it out because those are fold over areas. And if you can find something a little bit smaller, that's fine. But I'm using quarter inch because that's um, actually what I had. So now they, there's special hardware for this, but it, it's a lot of work to make hardware like that. And for something that's actually going to be on the back, I'm not too worried about it. But that's that's what you do. Go ahead and put on your buckle. I'll do the other side and let them dry. Okay, we're going to work on our Cheyenne roll. And um, this is our piece. It just really is to cover the edge here, right? <clears throat> and I didn't even bother to edge coat it. Edge coat it everywhere else, but I didn't edge coat that because I knew I was going to cover it. Um, this is um, just an option. I happen to like this option. I, I like the realism of it, but it can be um, a little bit challenging to get it to curve right. So we're going to try really hard. You see, this is really thin. It's tissue paper thin. Don't even know if you could find tissue paper thin anything anymore. I mean, except for tissue paper, of course. But this um, skyver is really thin. And I think it might have stretched a little on me, but. Try it just a little bit over. Try that again. Probably should use my symmetry trick where I fold it in half and find center. And anyways, I got this stretched. It's a little bit bigger now, but okay. Put that towards the back. All right, and this needs to be cut a little bit more. Just a touch to fit that in. That side's too. Yeah, there we go. So if we do it, it should be right on that line. And it's a little bit off, so we're going to try it again. And I'm going to need to move this light. If there's glare, I'm sorry, but I can't Let's get to that curse of middle-aged eyesight where you just can't see, con see without contrast. It's sad to get, get to that point. I used to be, I used to be nearsighted, which was lovely for crafts. And now I'm farsighted, which means in a matter of a decade, I went from being able to hold stuff up to my eye and see my new detail. And now I have 300x glasses on right now just to make sure I can see what I'm doing. And I still need light. So I feel sorry for us old folk. We were young once and we lost. We gain wisdom, we lose eyesight. Okay.
So, now do we have it right? Yeah, right along there, see? Should be right along, oh, right along there, see there's the edge. Okay. And now, we're gonna tuck everything on the other side and we're gonna try and do it without too many wrinkles. So I might only do a little bit at a time here. So, you're gonna wanna, it's gonna get these little wrinkles here and you wanna kinda work them in. Another reason to have a little piece of um, just t-shirt, old worn out t-shirts stained and whatever and I just kind of cut them into squares because paper towels get little lint and they also stick really badly to your fingers if you use paper towels so to see in the pictures how they do this. It's very similar. I don't know if I can use that tool. Let me get it. God, so... Another hooray for white glue so you get time to change your mind. Uh, the gel glues I've used, they, um, they have strings, so you got to pull away and you got the string you have to deal with, and by the time you deal with the string, the glue is pretty much dry. <clears throat> it's white glue, you've got a knot, you got more setup time. And um, some people don't like waiting five to ten seconds for something to set up, sometimes even longer, depending upon the materials you're using. But... Um, I think there's other benefits. Alright. So I'm telling you right now, this is definitely an advanced feature. If you don't like if you don't want to do the Cheyenne roll, then you can just use the other piece. And um but you'll find descriptions on how to do that and just about every it's like the standard way in the hobby of doing it is just to have a piece of um, piece of leather that goes over the back as the cantle and um, this is unusual so I'm going to try and show you how to do it now if you notice we've got this we're going to need to do a little bit of edge coating just use a sharpie in here, get more control. But it's also a good way to start training your Cheyenne roll to bend where it needs to bend. And we're actually going to trim a little bit of this right here, but I want to. Probably should have done that before I did the roll, but. Whenever you notice something needs to be done, just stop it and do it. And it is true, the Cheyenne roll would probably, this leather would probably be a different color, more of a white. <coughs> so that it stands out. Let's see why I like my Sharpie. Get a lot more control than when I'm using a brush. 
right. All right, there you go. That's your Cheyenne roll. One last thing with the Cheyenne roll is um, we need to trim just a little bit to help it make its bend, all right? And it's just, show you, it's just a little bit. And just up. So do it a sixteenth of an inch at a time until you see how it actually bends under. So it's supposed to bend under like that. And it so it's not very much, it's just a little bit. And once this gets on like that, it'll want to, believe me, it'll, it'll work. Okay, so now we're going to do um, stirrups, all right? And these are a multi-stage process where you really want the glue to dry in between stages. Um, these are, we'll start off with the straight pin. So these, I went and measured them. The, the ones I have are inch and a quarter, right? Not inch and a half. I was kind of guessing. Um, we're going to go ahead and put our pin into the liner. And we're going to put it in from... The back side so and by the way these are flat head they're flat now, these are slightly rounded but the flatter the, the the top you can get the better okay and then this is totally optional but when I'm shaping um, the leather sometimes it fights me and I find having a, a, a thin or just a little strip of uh, aluminum in there helps me to get my bell shape so I'm going to I thought that was thin enough and I need to Make that a little bit smaller, and it's just from an aluminum can. So I'm just trimming down the side. It doesn't have to have super straight edges, and I really only need enough for two. So, so I'm going to glue down, and it doesn't glue real well, but we just want to stabilize it a little bit. Um, so basically, from uh, below the the a little bit below the. Um, you call it the the pinhead and um, 1 16th about a 16th of an inch from either side of that pinhead and we're gonna make two of these and um, I'm gonna try and just show you the one and then edit a little bit because like I said this is um, these are getting to be really long and I want to make sure I'm just showing you the meat of what I'm doing so this is just gonna stabilize it it doesn't really you know, it's not permanent because it's hard to glue metal to leather, right? But I just need it to stay in place long enough for me to go ahead and um, get my outer stirrup on there, okay? And it, it just, like I said, holds it. And our next step is to go ahead and glue this. I don't want to glue this end here. Leave this unglued. So we're going to glue from all the way from here to there, and um, you can pick whichever side, so I'm going to put my finger there, and I want to have a whole bunch of clamps ready, so we're going to clamp this assembly in place and let it dry completely before we do the next step. And these work. There's all sorts of clamps. I just happen to have these out. Um, some micro clamps that I like to use. Um, I didn't pull those out, so we're just going to go with these. And yeah, I'm going to clamp everywhere. And I need to make sure, like I said, that it completely dries. Because once I start to manipulate it, if it's not dry, the, the, um, they stretch weird and then it, it um, one side um, will come loose from the other. But I did keep this unglued because I still have to deal with the pen on the other side. But go ahead and do that to both of them and then just set them aside to dry. Okay, so that's about as far as we're going to go today because uh, I only want to do like one hour or so episodes. Um, and we'll go ahead and finish the assembly next time. See ya.